In the last episode, we talked about what allyship is and why it's important for helping with diversity in the workplace today. If you missed that episode, I've included a link to it below this video. In today's episode, we're going to dive into some best practices on how you can become a better ally through simple everyday actions. So stay tuned. Welcome to Build, brought to you by Pivotal Tracker. I'm your host, Purnima Vijay Shankar. In each episode of Build, innovators and I debunk a number of myths and misconceptions related to building products, companies, and your career in tech. Now, two big misconceptions that a lot of folks have when it comes to being an ally for diversity is thinking that they need to have a green light from some high-level executive in order to have their initiative come out and thinking that the initiative has to make a big impact in order to even pursue it. Well, it turns out that there are some everyday actions that you can do that will cause a ripple effect and improve diversity in your workplace. And we're gonna share what those are in today's episode. And to help us out, Karen Catlin is back. Karen is my co-author for our book, Present. She's also a leadership coach and an advocate for diverse and inclusive workplaces. Thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks so much for having me again. Yeah. So let's do a quick recap for people who might be joining us. Tell us what allyship is and again, why it's important today. Mm -hmm. So allyship is simply using your position of privilege to make a more inclusive workplace and help other people be successful if they don't have quite as much privilege as you. And this is so important today because we have a war on talent. It's hard to hire people, so you want to cast a wide net and mm -hmm. keep those people, once you've hired them, keep them productive and working hard at your company and stayed, staying there. Um, and there are all these studies showing economic benefits, benefits of improved innovation, problem solving, and decision making. So that's why it's important. Yeah. So let's talk about how people can get started, because I'm sure there's people in our audience who would love to get started as an ally. Yeah. So it's really not that hard. And I love the way you started out saying you don't have to have a huge initiative. You don't have to be the VP of people at your company or head of diversity and inclusion to start being an ally. You simply, I think, need to just start paying attention to what's going on around your workplace and raising awareness yourself. Um, and if you're not really aware of, like, what are some of the things I could be doing, it's fine to ask someone who is an underrepresented gender or minority, just ask them for some feedback of what are some of the challenges you're facing and what's one thing I could be doing to help you out. So in your upcoming book, you provide a myriad best practices. But before we dive into some of those, let's talk about how you went about testing these practices. So, yeah, so I started testing these ideas actually on Twitter. Okay. About four years ago, I started a Twitter handle called At Better Allies. And it was anonymous. It's, it still is anonymous until this show, actually. <laughs> um, and I started tweeting simple everyday actions that someone could take to create a more inclusive workplace. Mm -hmm. And my whole goal was that I didn't want it to be, you, you didn't have to feel like you were the head of, people at your company mm -hmm. or head of diversity and inclusion to make a difference. It really was something that the normal person could do. Mm -hmm. So I started tweeting these ideas based on my experience working in tech, based on coaching clients I had, as well as the research that's, that was being published at the time of the challenges that are um, happening in tech workplaces as well as other workplaces by people who are underrepresented. Um, and based on the reaction, I kind of started realizing, okay, that works, that's helpful, that's not so helpful. And where it was helpful, it was really helpful. And mm -hmm. I started getting, again, positive reinforcement that these messages were making a difference mm -hmm. to the people who are consuming them. And checking out my Twitter handle, too, it's like, it's, there's some, um, you can use Twitter analytics to find out a little bit about your demographics. Mm -hmm. And I have about 50% followers who are men, 50% women. So I know that there are a lot of, men yeah. who are paying attention to this and appreciating the content. Nice. I know you've coached some men, so do you mind sharing maybe one or two examples of how these best practices have helped their team or their company? Sure. The one that's just so memorable to me is I was um, coaching a man about, he wanted to hire more diverse talent for mm -hmm. his team, and we started talking about just different aspects. And I asked him, so how does the team socialize today? Like, you know, to 
go out to lunch or after hours? You know, what's the social life like for the team? And he looked at me and he said, oh, you mean I probably should have told those guys going to the strip club club for lunch last week that that's not cool? I'm like, yeah, maybe that wasn't exactly the most inclusive social event. Um, And he honestly, like, and bless him, he just hadn't realized how other people might feel that they couldn't go out to lunch that day Mm -hmm. with some of the team members, right? Um, another example is some of the language we use. Mm-hmm. And I know um, Pivotal Tracker, I remember reading a blog post that they now have uh, something in their daily stand-up and in their build process for the week called the inclusion thing of the week. Oh, cool. And they just come up with an idea of something that they can be doing to be more inclusive. Mm-hmm. And they talk about it in their daily stand-ups and everything. And one of them was simply, don't use the word guys. Mm-hmm. Now, some people may be thinking, wait a second, Karen, what do you mean? Like, guys is gender neutral. We mm-hmm. use it all the time. And to them, I always like to say, well, if you were a woman and you need to use a public restroom and there was a door marked guys, do you go in? Probably not. Or if someone were to ask you, a man, like, how many guys did you date in high school? They're not thinking women, right? They're, right? <laughs> right? So guys is not gender neutral. So that's another thing that, as Pivotal Tracker learned, was a simple thing they could do. Um, as I've started coaching other people, too, um, examples come up such as, well, what's your spirit animal? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's not very inclusive because spirit animal is actually an important part of some Native American mm-hmm. cultures and a spiritual component mm-hmm. of it. So it's really kind of pro- uh, appropriating their right. culture. So I can't believe this is such a beautiful example of an alternative. Why not use Patronus uh-huh. instead from Harry Potter? Right? Uh-huh. So just, just swap that out yeah. and... Have everyone feel that they can be included in the conversation. Got it. Okay, so let's dive in now and have you share three best practices from your book. Yeah. So the first one I'll share is all about performance feedback. Mm -hmm. People who do research into performance feedback have done things like studied performance reviews, written performance reviews, thousands of them, and found that there is gendered differences Mm -hmm. in how we give feedback to women versus men. And some of that gender difference shows up in the form of the feedback that we give to women is more vague. And with men, it's more specific. We're telling men more often that this is how your work has impacted the business. Here's how you can keep impacting Mm. the business. Here's a skill you need to learn to have a bigger impact on the business. And with women, less so. It's more vague. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there have been studies showing that we actually tend to hold back from giving constructive feedback, the hard feedback, to people who are different than us. So whether that's a different gender, different race, or so forth, we hold back from giving the constructive feedback probably because we don't want someone to think that, oh, he's only giving me that feedback because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. So as a man, we might think, I don't want to give a woman feedback because she's going to think I'm sexist if I criticize her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give a person of color feedback if I'm white because they're going to think I'm racist, Mm -hmm. right? So we hold back and we soften the feedback but that doesn't do anyone any good, right? It's, it's, yeah. We really need that, that feedback, the constructive as well as the positive feedback to keep growing our careers. So in the book, there's a whole chapter on giving feedback with best practices of doing things like looking at the language you're using mm-hmm. and are you actually tying the feedback that you're giving someone to their performance mm-hmm. um, and to the impact they're having on the business? Are you providing skill-based suggestions about how they can grow mm-hmm. their career that way? And at the end of the day, are you writing reviews of roughly the same length for mm-hmm. men and women, for all of your staff? Because that's one indicator that you might be skimping on the feedback. Real easy thing to check. Nice. Well, that's a very comprehensive best practice. Thank you for sharing. Do you have another one? Sure. Pay attention to what happens in meetings. Mm-hmm. So much of tech, and frankly, any workplace, is driven through meetings. Mm-hmm. And in meetings, there are a number of dynamics at play that really prevent people who are in the minority from speaking up and fully participating. Perhaps it's that they are interrupted. We've talked about that already. Um, And a number of reasons why that might happen. But if that is part of your culture, or perhaps there are some repeat offenders Mm -hmm. uh, who interrupt frequently, that could be something you could be paying attention to and stopping. Um, It could be that the ideas are not being credited appropriately um, when women or people in minority positions are bringing them up. It may be that um, someone's asking a question, like in a client meeting, of 
what they who they ask the question to the person who they think is in the power position of the meeting, uh-huh. probably a man, when really it should go to a woman. So redirect that question to like, well, some, you say something like, um, you know, that question would be best answered by Pornima, the founder of Femgineer. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. get, like throw that question to the right person. Um, and so look for ways uh, that you can create more inclusive meetings by just paying attention to these social cues that are happening. Got it. So this is great in meetings, but I think sometimes we're not sure if we're doing it the right way. So is there a way we can solicit feedback from our peers, sure. from our boss? Yeah. Why not? use the back channel, the okay. back channel yeah. that's in any meeting. I mean, we all use them, right? The right. DMs or the text messages, the private chats mm-hmm. to just like touch base with people. Like, what did you think of that point they just mm-hmm. made? Or um, did I clarify everything I should have clarified? You know, we're constantly using the back channels. Why not just ask people in the meeting that mm-hmm. you trust, right. have someone DM you when you could have been a better ally, when you could have stood up, when you for someone who was interrupted or had trouble making a point in the meeting or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Use the back channel. Okay. And your third best practice that you'd like to share with us. Yeah. So the third one is, I think I'll choose office housework. So office housework is the stuff that needs to happen in any office and it's no one's job really to get it done. And it's important work, but not really leading to business growth, Mm -hmm. career growth, and so forth. The classic example is taking the minutes at a meeting Mm -hmm. when that's not your job. Okay. If it's your job, that's not office housework. That's your job. But if it's no one's job and you just have called a meeting and someone needs to take the minutes, it often falls on the shoulder of a woman sitting around the table. And the problem with that is the person taking the minutes is usually a step behind. So they're not participating in the meeting at full force, so to speak. And so they're being left out. Their voice isn't counted as much. Um, they're also put in a subservient position to the maybe their peers who are mm-hmm. sitting around the table, and that's not fair, and that might have longer impact, right, um, well beyond the meeting. So much better to set up a rotation. Yeah. Actually, I did right? that at my second startup. Yeah. Excellent. So you were, yeah. you were a great ally there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but office housework isn't just meeting minutes. It's also things like maybe it is uh, someone's got to clean up all the comments in the code before we ship it off to our partner or to make it open source, mm-hmm. right? That important work needs to happen, but it doesn't really lead to career right. growth, right? Um, it could be, oh, we need someone to mentor the intern again this summer. You know, Susie did it the last five summers, and she's awesome at it, right? Right, well, but maybe Susie doesn't want to do it again. Right. She wants to do something else. Exactly, because yeah. the first time, yeah, maybe there's some career growth there. You learn to mentor. You mm-hmm. learn to have that leadership skill. But the fifth time, you've probably mastered it, and um, maybe it's time to spread the wealth there. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. So these three are great for inside your company. Do you have maybe a couple of best practices you would share for the community at large? Sure. So I think we'll, we should think about our networks, the <laughs> networks we build professionally. And our networks, and there's research on this too, that they become very homogenous mm-hmm. or just like me because we meet people and hang out with people and connect with people and stay in touch with people who we share some common interest with, Right. So it's not that that can't cross gender bounds or racial bounds or anything Mm -hmm. like that, but we tend to have networks that are primarily just look like us. Mm -hmm. And so the impact of that is that then we only have people who are like us that we connect with opportunities, Mm -hmm. whether that is to get a new job or to speak at an event or some other career growing opportunity, right? We recommend people in our network. So the call to action here is diversify your network, Mm -hmm. right? The next time you're out at any kind of professional event, like go say hello and introduce yourself to someone who does not look like you. Yeah. Whatever that means, right? Start a conversation, see if you can't connect them with an opportunity, and the reverse might happen too. So diversify your network, I'd say, is the first one. The second thing is, and this is such an important part of being an ally, is don't just be a bystander mm-hmm. where, like, I don't do these bad things, right. right? Be an upstander. When you see something bad happening, don't just, like, say, that's not my problem. Like, say something. You know, see something, say something. Um, there was a story that was shared on Twitter just, I think, a week or two ago of a woman saying that one of the worst things that ever happened to her as a public speaker mm-hmm. was that there was a man who asked a question during the Q&A and kind of demanded to know, was she single? Hmm. Because he wanted to pursue things with her. And 
at the time, I mean, I wish there had been an upstander in the audience yeah. who would just stand up and say, like, basically, hey, dude, we don't do that here. Right. That's all it takes. Diffuse it and put the, put the guy in his place and show some support for the woman. Yeah. Well, you remember when I was in Canada, I fortunately had a team that helped when I had a heckler in the audience and just kindly took this gentleman outside I and I could kind of move on with my Q&A. So yeah. it helps to have those folks in your kind of corner. Yes, absolutely. So be one of those people. Be one of those corner. people. Yep. Yes. So I know we just scratched the surface. So tell us more about the upcoming book as well as how people in our audience can work with you. Yeah. So the book is Better Allies, Everyday Actions for Creating More Inclusive, Engaging Workplaces. And you can get in touch with me at karencatlin.com. But I really encourage you to follow at Better Allies on Twitter or other social channels. We're on Instagram, nice. Pinterest, um, and Medium as well. And there's a newsletter also. So if you go to betterallies.com, you can get the subscription link to the newsletter. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I can't wait to read Karen's book. And that's it for this episode of Build. Be sure to share this episode with your teammates, your friends, your boss, anyone who you think may be wanting to be an ally. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive the next episode. Ciao for now. This episode of Build is brought to you by our main sponsor, Pivotal Tracker. We'd also like to thank our Platinum Patreon patrons, Corky Bites, The Developer Show, and Jamie Hand. Finally, thanks to the following new patrons. If you've enjoyed watching Build, please consider becoming a patron and contributing on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash build. You can pledge $5 a month or more, and your pledges will go towards helping us produce and promote the show. In exchange, you'll receive perks like being mentioned in the credits, digital copies of our latest book, and Platinum patrons will receive exclusive perks like monthly online group coaching, where I provide more hands-on coaching on a number of topics related to entrepreneurship and leadership. To find out more and contribute, please visit www.patreon.com forward slash build. Welcome to Femgineer's Confident Communicator course introductory video series. I'm Pony Moby J. Shanker, the founder of Femgineer. And I'm Karen Catlin, a former tech executive who's now an advocate for women who are working in the tech industry. For the last 22 years, I have been speaking in public and for the last eight within the tech industry. I have given a TEDx talk, I've been a guest lecturer at Duke's Pratt School of Engineering, an entrepreneur in residence at 500 Startups, a mentor in residence at Techstars, and was the founding engineer of Mint.com. I am on my second career. In my first career, I spent 25 years building software products. I started out as a software engineer and over time moved to the executive level where I was a vice president at Adobe Systems. Now in my second career, I'm an advocate for women, which means I do a lot of public speaking about diversity, about women's leadership topics, and I've given a TEDx talk. The Confident Communicator course is a live online course that Karen and I co-teach together. In this video series, we're gonna give you a sense of what the Confident Communicator course is and what you'll get out of it. You'll learn about the challenges Pornima and I have faced learning the craft of public speaking ourselves. You'll learn why we decided we just couldn't keep all of this knowledge to ourselves and you'll hear from students who have taken the class about how they have become more confident communicators. You're going to get a behind the scenes look at the entire course. You'll meet some past students and see how they went from being shy and nervous to poised and confident communicators. You're also going to meet employers and sponsors who found the course valuable enough to invest in and send their people. And finally, you'll get some sample lessons so you know the material that we're gonna be covering. Sign up below to receive the first lesson immediately where you'll understand why it's not good enough to just be heads down. You need to speak up to get the recognition you deserve. Ciao for now.